Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmley. And contrary, perhaps, to the appearance of the building behind me, this is not Scandinavia. This is another Staffordshire church. And this is the church of All Saints, Milwich. This is a, an interesting building. It is, well, you can see behind me, it has been at some point entirely lined in matchboard panelling apart from the ceiling. So... The date of the building, well, you ask, is this a, one of these timber frame? No, this is actually a, a brick building, mostly. However, what's happened is that someone at some point has gone, wouldn't it be a brilliant idea to line the church with matchboard panelling? And it's quite interesting. I'm not sure I like it, but it's quite interesting. Um, it certainly makes for a unique appearance. There's actually been a church here since the 12th century. This is a historic church site, and... There has, well, there's bits of this church that's still medieval bits, because in the 18th century, the nave became unsafe, and it was the nave and chancel had been pulled down. So what we have here is a an 18th century building that's then been altered in the 19th century, and particulars have this panelling put in, which gives it its, shall we say, unique appearance. We'll have a look around. And we shall see some of the many fascinate well, many fascinating things to see in All Saints Millage. And so as usual we start at the West End, and you can just see there's a gallery here, quite a deep West Gallery. It does seem to have been extended forwards to give extra accommodation, because of course 18th century churches, early 19th century, they'd really designed to have galleries, they are preaching churches. This obviously has been, as we said, altered in the 19th century, but it still retains very much this, this preaching church form, because it's not what you can do about it, given that this is the actual shape of the building. We do have a medieval font. It's, uh, is 13, it is well, 12th century, a bit battered. It, you can see at the top there where the clasp used to be, because they used to have lockable, and uh, necessarily lockable, lids because there was a lot of superstition in the Middle Ages about uh, holy water taken out of fonts and they were kept fill filled all the time. It could be quite disgusting actually, so I'm told. Holy water could be used in magic and so obviously you didn't want people taking holy water to use it in their magic. And uh, There is a, a little fontlet up here. The, the Methodists and the Anglicans have moved in together here so this would have come from the Methodist chapel and obviously that could be used at the front, whereas the Anglican traditional position of the font is at the back. The font has been damaged, probably when the building partially collapsed, and you can see part of it's been filled in later. We have a, it's a fascinating building, simply because it's one of these buildings that's had this accident happen to it. Um, choir stall fronts, the backs are gone. Under the gallery is now this... Um, flexible space, quite a decent church library which includes the Trent Valley Parish Magazine going back into the 19th century. There's a Methodist church banner. There's not a lot of monuments. Here we have uh, George Vernon, late an officer in the 80th Regiment of Foot who departed this life in His Majesty's Barracks at Colchester the 2nd day of August 1818 in the 31st year of his age, his mortal remains are interred in the churchyard of the parish of St. James, Colchester. His brother officers have erected a tomb over his grave, upon which is the following inscription. This tomb is erected by his brother officers as a small token of the regard and estimation in which he was held by them, and which, by his conduct as an officer and a gentleman, he has so justly merited. We have here a, a benefaction it's quite common in your will you if you were rich and pious you would leave something useful we have here um, memorial to a former former vicar there's the, the risen Christ another benefaction and another memorial um, all memorials seem to be early 19th century it's about right given the rebuilding the chancel arch is a bit weird, owing again to this panelling business. It's kind of this proscenium effect. Um, and we've got a big Victorian 
east window there. I'm not sure what the... Um, but, I mean, we'll see the charts when we go outside. We have a picture of, well, ceramic portrait of John Wesley here, obviously from the Methodists. Um, this was presented to, the, to All Saints Milwich by the members of Hildeston Methodist Church following that church's closure, 7th of November, 1993. And then we have here, I was sick and you visited me. Pulpit is 19th century, quite good. And as you can see, it's quite a big pulpit. Um, there we have the eagle lectern. The chancel is, again, very, very typically for this sort of late 18th, early 19th century. It's very, very shallow. And we have Christ the Good Shepherd on one side, and Christ in glory on the other, Christ the King. And that east window crucifixion flanked by um, Saint Saint Peter and I should know who the other chap is, but Saint Peter obviously the cross keys and but there we are. The parish chest with the usual multiple locks and of course this was to make sure that no one person had access because one person had access they can steal from it. And looking west we have this nice west gallery, big deep gallery and uh, on the front a tapestry for all the saints who from their labours rest, who be by faith before the world confess, thy name O Jesus be forever blessed, hallelujah. And a reference to the, con to the uh, dedication of the church here to all saints. So it's one of these big late 18th century preaching boxes here. They're actually quite fun, these preaching boxes. I like them, and I know a lot of people are a bit sniffy about them just as being these boxes, but they're designed for a purpose. They're designed for this reformed worship where the emphasis is on the word. You've also got here a nice open area for the, the communion. But it's, it is, it's a communion area. It's not a, a big sanctuary for the choir and everything. Which again, I think is quite a good idea. So this more or less is the inside. Processional cross, the sort of thing that became quite popular in the 19th century was to have these processions and this sort of thing. And it was a way of holding these things before the, before the world. So back to the, the doors, the big double doors, and we've got one of those uh, over door, what they call um, air curtains. And there again is that slightly battered font because clearly the, the old church collapsed, or most of it. And that would have been the what, 12th century and rebuilt and now completely rebuilt. So that's the inside. We'll just um, head out to the tower because this is one of those cases where you come in through the tower, they've decided that having a... So here we are. There's a west door, so why not make that the only door? And after all, why not? Stairs up there, and those, those will of course go eventually to the gallery, we won't... Uh, see how steep they are, and how narrow. And of course we're out in the country here, and this is the sort of stairs in any case that ordinary folk would have in their houses. So these are sort of basically a farmhouse cottage type stairs. And there we have this window. So we'll go outside and have a look at the outside of this building, which is quite fascinating, although not quite as strange as the inside. Also here we are on the outside. We'll be a bit careful there's a dog over the, over the, uh, you can hear him, um, over the hedge there. You can see outside immediately you've got this lovely 15th century tower, really good, and you've got then this um, grey brick nave, and it's all very much of the period, very interesting, and clearly what's happened is that the nave, which would have had, have been, had aisles and may have been, because I mean, originally the church here is 12th century, but there's clearly there's then been a church that's been, been rebuilt and this tower's been added, and probably just lack of maintenance in the 18th century means it comes crashing down and they've just got to rebuild and of course they rebuild what they want 
because in the 18th century what you wanted was very often this sort of preaching box. So we'll have a look around the outside and make some comments. You'll also notice that we're approaching from the north side, which is quite unusual, but clearly it's always been that, that way because the village is on this side and not that side of the church. So here we are, we're going around the outside now here at Millwich. Now where we start, we start here and we've got uh, old, old, old vicarage. And this is the memorial of the Reverend Thomas Tibbetts Whitaker, 11 years vicar of this parish, who passed away August the 15th, 1914, aged 56 years, until the daybreak and the shadows flee away. And then, very welcoming sign there, church open, we always like to see that. Um, and up we go round the graveyard, quite a, a nice graveyard, and you've got your sundial, um, just a bit in the graveyard by the church. It's a, a very nice setting. You can see there you've got a window, it's just part of the tracery still visible. A few gargoyles on the tower. Gargoyles, as we all know, are ornamental water spouts. They, they serve a purpose, but they also look quite fun ground, bit of parkland sloping down there to the river below. I forget which river it is. I don't think it's the Trent, but I could be wrong. Um, maybe, no, it is the Trent. Of course, the Trent. The Trent Valley benefits, isn't it? So yes, that's the Trent down there. Well, the Trent is down there somewhere. Um, and yes, we've got a simple square box chancel and simple square box church, really. very pleasant. You've got a stone plinth. It's quite normal for these brick churches of this period to have a stone plinth. The, um, the bricks are laid in, um, I was going to say, what, English bond. It's not quite English bond. It's kind of a weird bond. Um, the bond is to, is to do with the head, header and uh, stretcher in terms of the bricks. It's how the bricks lay next to each other and it's mostly English Bond. Yeah, mostly English Bond. Nice. There's a bit, a bit of a, a south graveyard, but not as much as there is a north graveyard. And a bit overgrown, quite nice. Um, obviously the south graveyard's the older part, and so it's a bit more overgrown than the north. And round again, pointed windows. Thankfully here the, there hasn't been this grand Victorian, oh we have to try and make this look medieval, because it isn't, so the only bit that's medieval is that tower. Now here, on this side quite interesting, because you can see the medieval roof line, just, just there. And that tells us that the medieval church is offset as far as the tower, and that, of course that's a later tower, because th that, that tower is now central, but it wasn't originally. When it was built, it was built to one side for some reason. Don't know what, what the reason, but there would be one. That little box chancel. Um, this sort of building is interesting because it, it's kind of what, what we had to rebuild, and this is what how we did it. And the Victorians they'd like to go well. We tried to rebuild this so it looks looks medieval. The, the Georgians go we we, to, we rebuilt this so it uh, did what we wanted it to do. Whereas before it didn't quite do what you wanted to do. Because how your church is laid out has a lot to do with how you worship. And of course the medieval churches are built for the mass. They're built for this sacramental worship with multiple altars. And it's very much an altar worship, whereas the Georgian church is very much a pulpit worship. And that's why we have the, the preaching box that we have here today. And so here we are, Millwich Church, there you go. It's a marvellous building and I, I just find it interesting in terms of this medieval tower, Georgian Church. It tells us something about how worships change and how the Georgians say we have to build a church, because you do, you, you build your church according to how you worship or you end up worshipping according to how you build your church. It's one thing if you've inherited a church from a different type, a different tradition, as of course the medieval church of England did at the Reformation. But here it's, 
we have a chance to build a church according to our tradition and they've done it I think very well well thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed this I've enjoyed coming out and making it and um, God bless you and keep you until next time